Becca and today I'm going to show you how you can automatically counterbalance your experiments in online experiments. Now just a quick note that this is in Psychopi version 2023.2.2. Um, so if you are using a very early version of Psychopi, do make sure to update to this one. Or if you're watching this in the future, it might be that there's actually easier ways of counterbalancing online. Um, so do stay tuned for new videos. Okay, so here I have an experiment that I've created earlier. And in this experiment, I have two groups and different things happen depending on which group you are in. So group one will see this part of my experiment, but group two will see this part of my experiment. Now in my experiment at the moment, I just have placeholder text that's just going to say, for example, for group one, uh, you are in group one. And for group two, it will say you are in group two. Now, the way in which we currently do this, not automatically online, is we actually have a drop down box at the beginning of the experiment um, that will appear a bit like this. So if I take you to my Pavlovia page for this project and I click run, you can see there's a drop down here, group one or group two. If I select group two, I see the part of my experiment that is you are in group two. Now, the way in which we are currently implementing that is in experiment settings, we have this field called group and the options there are group one and group two. And then at the beginning of our experiment, we have a routine which has a code component in it. And that code component looks like this. So you've got a variable called group two trial reps, which is zero, group one trial reps, which is zero as well. And then we're fetching what was the option selected in that drop down uh, menu in order to turn on effectively part of our experiment flow. So if you're in group one, we'll turn group one trial reps to one. If you're in group two, we'll turn group two trial reps to, to one. And those variables are used on your flow to turn on and off different parts of your experiment. The way that works is if you click on one of these loops here, you'll see, for instance, the N reps field in this corresponds to group one trials reps. So if it's zero, this is gonna be skipped completely. If it's one, this will be presented once. Similarly, for group two, if it is zero, if group two trial reps is zero, this part will be skipped completely. If it's one, this will be presented once. Now, this is fine. However, it isn't exactly automatic. Um, one thing that you can do in online experiments, again, not automatic, but it is nice and easy, is you can update your URL um, with a query string. So the way we do this is we update the URL for our experiment by adding a question mark, the name of the field you want to complete, and then equals and the value you want to complete that with. So for instance, here, you can see that group field is now gone. This participant is in group one because you've automatically completed that field. However, the tricky thing here is, of course, what if you want to just leave it automatic and you want group assignment to, uh, to run in the background of your experiment without you having to make two separate links and share them um, with two different groups of participants. Now here is where the shelf comes in. Um, now the shelf can be found on pavlovia.org if you go to your dashboard and here there is a tab called shelf. And we'll be coming back to this view in a moment in order to set up what we call a shelf record on this shelf. Now, first of all, we need to make an update to our experiment so that it's not using that drop down. Instead, it's going to automatically retrieve um, some value from pavlovia.org, that shelf record that I mentioned a moment ago. So what we can do, first of all, let's remove this field from expert info because uh, we don't need that anymore. And also in our pick group, um, what we're going to do in a moment is we're going to replace this reference to that drop down because we're going to refer to something else instead. Okay, what we're going to do, we're going to click insert routine and new. And here we're actually going to use a routine template. Now these are template routines that we've already created that we help hope might guide you in making experiments faster. So if you go to the online section and go to counterbalancing, um, let's call this uh, fetch shelf. And I'm going to put that at the beginning of my experiment. Now, if you click on that, you will notice here um, that there are two components in there. One is a code component and one is a text component. Now that text component there reads, hi, you are in group 
and then it fills in this variable counterbal.group that will hopefully become clear in a minute. And then it says sampling complete and it fills in another variable called counterbal.finished. So the question is, where is that counterbal value coming from? Now to find the answer to that, we can go to our code component. And here we can see at the beginning of the experiment, there is a variable created called counterbal. And the command that is called there, or the method that's called is psychojs shelf counterbal select. And what it's doing is it's trying to fetch something from our shelf called my groups. So what we need to do for this to work is we need to actually say, okay, um, let's first of all set up my groups on your shelf record. So to do that, let's go back to pavlovia.org. Uh, we're in this shelf area and we're going to click add a new record. Um, now, actually, I can see that I've already got a record called my groups, but hopefully this will be okay here. So we call it my groups. What we then want to do is say, which experiment is this shelf record intended for? Now, designer means in theory that shelf record can be accessed by a number of different experiments in your account. We in this scenario are just going to go experiment and then we're going to look for um, the shelf tutorial that we are creating here. So if I have a scroll through my many, many experiments, hopefully I will come to shelf tutorial. Lovely. Now, the next value on our shelf is the type. Now, there's a number of different variables that we might want to use in our on our shelf. Maybe we want to just pass a number between experiments or a Boolean. In this case, we want to use dictionary because that's going to be what we use for our counterbalancing. So if we cl click create record, that will then create the value for this shelf record, which by default is an empty dictionary. So we're going to set that up and actually rather conveniently, I'm just going to copy something that I had in a previous example here. So I can copy that over and paste it in, except rather than groups A and B, we're going to say group one and we're going to say group two. Now here what we want is how many participants do we want for each one of those groups? So let's say we want 10 for now. And then we update that in order to save the record on our shelf here. And we can see we've now got the groups are group one and group two. The group sizes are 10 and 10. Okay, lovely. So now we want to go back to our PsychoPy experiment here. And recall that what's happening is in our very first routine, we have our code component. That code component is going to fetch that value, uh, that dictionary value from the shelf. But this counterbalance select function is actually going to sample one of those groups. And what that's going to return is the name of the group that this participant is going to be in. And also if counterbalancing is complete. And that's what will be displayed here. So counterbal.group is going to correspond to either group one or group two. So recall that we do need to make a final update to our experiment because previously what we were doing in our pick group routine was we were using that value retrieved from the drop down in our experiment, which is what this exp info group is. This time we just want to replace that with counterbal.group. And that will now mean that our experiment runs pretty much the same, except now it's going to do it automatically in the background assigning group. So I'm going to say add interaction with shelf. And once those changes are synced, I can then go to my project on pavlovia.org. I'm going to go to my shelf tutorial. And this time that we're expecting a few differences. So if I press run, first of all, we're expecting, yep, that drop down doesn't appear because I've removed it. Secondly, if I click OK, I'll first of all see, hi there, you're in group one, sampling complete false. And then I was presented with that part of my experiment that group one saw. Now, here's what's actually quite exciting is if you go back to your shelf and you refresh the shelf, recall that previously we had here group one, and group two, and then we had 10 and 10. Well, we know that one participant was just assigned to group one. So if we refresh that, now we can see that there are only nine slots remaining for group one and there are still 10 slots remaining for group two.
Now, one thing to bear in mind here is that once these are completed, you need to build in a way of handling that in your experiment. I think that we'll cover that in a separate tutorial. So hopefully this has been a useful introduction to using the shelf uh, for counterbalancing in pavlovia.org. If you have any questions or comments or more tutorials you want to see, please do add to the comment section on this video. Um, but I hope that you found this useful and um, good luck with your experiments.